Let's keep the conversation going now with Mike Brown. He is the CEO of Travel and Leisure. And let's start, of course, with that guy that seems to be really weighing on shares this morning. You take a look at third quarter adjusted EBITDA between $235 million to $245 million. The estimate was for about $253 million. Give us some context on why you guided lower than had been expected. Well, let me step back and look at the full year guide uh, on our earnings call. We actually raised our full year guide from where we were in the previous quarter. And what we pointed out on the call is the cadence of those earnings between Q3 and Q4 was just a little misaligned to the street. The great thing is, uh, even though our Q3 guide was a little bit lower, our full year guide not only met our previous guidance from Q, Q1, but we actually raised it a little bit. So that's more a matter of um, guiding between quarters than it is our full year expectation. In the end, our underlying business is really performing strong and reflecting a consumer demand that's very high this summer and what we expect for the remainder of the year. I do want to talk about the detail that I noticed that there was a higher than expected loan loss provision. Some of the sell side notes focusing on that this morning. What does that say about your lower end customer? Of course, we talk all the time about the weakening consumer here. And you take a look at this higher than expected markup. What are you seeing there? Well, um, I think there's nothing different in what you're seeing at our company than you're seeing in the macro economy is when you get to the lower end consumer, uh, which is anything we're defining as below 700 FICOs, those uh, consumer finance portfolio numbers are slightly weaker. Um, 76% of our portfolio is above the 700 FICO. So I don't think for us there was any surprise that you would expect to see a little bit more weakness. It's reflective of what we're seeing in the macro economy. And people are reacting to it. Uh, I was listening before the break that there were a lot of companies that were lowering their guidance over concern in the consumer. For us, we're the opposite. We raised our guidance despite what we're seeing in a $3 billion consumer finance portfolio. We're simply reflecting what others are seeing in the market while raising our full year guidance and reflecting strong consumer demand in the last two quarters of the year. Mike, how do you describe what's going on in the travel market here? If there are a lot of worries kind of across corporate America here about middle to lower end consumers, uh, lower income consumers, then how do you think about who is driving most of the spend? Is it these big spenders going to higher end locations or is it people who are just trying to spend a summer break more locally? Well, we're a 100% leisure company and leisure travel company. And what we see just to the nature of our business, which is prepaid vacation, is when the economy tightens, people will not give up their vacation. I think we saw that in 22 and 23 as, as people returned as fast as they could to getting on vacation after the pandemic. What you will see is a change of behavior as to where their spend will be. They may decide to come to a regional destination that allows them to save some money on a drive to versus a fly to. Um, we're seeing our biggest demand in your traditional vacation spots, Orlando, Las Vegas, Las Vegas and the beach destinations in the summer months. So the consumer is very wise. They make uh, clever decisions based on where the economy is. And with a little bit of uncertainty ahead for the second half of the year for our consumer, they're just driving maybe a little bit more and choosing to spend their money. But what they will not do is give up their vacation uh, in our space, which is prepaid vacations. I'm curious about your view into the second half of the year. At this point, Mike, are you most concerned on behalf of your customers here for high pricing that remains even when you see inflation kind of cooling here? Or is it the fact that people are worried about the economy and growth slowing down, maybe even a recession? Well, I think I think uh, whether it's uh, travel decisions or or investing in the stock market, uncertainty is is always uh, uh, an element that gives people pause. So, I'm not concerned that our consumer, which 80% of them have fully paid for their vacation, are not going to go on vacation. Um, we va- we actually sit very well because it's value driven and people can really use their money how they choose to. But when I look more broadly at the leisure travel sector, I think. Uh, 
whether it's interest rates, an election, or the macro economy, taking uncertainty off the table uh, will be the best thing for the travel consumer in the second half of this year. Is I mean, you get the lion's share of your revenue from timeshare sales. Is that, is that right? Vacation ownership is that timeshare sales? And and what is that consumer? What what is the por- uh, profile of that consumer? So our consumer, on an average, has a household income just over a hundred thousand dollars, and our average FICO score is about seven hundred and and forty for all of our new originations. So it is a strong consumer, and over the last three years, what we've seen um, is that the inflation has actually been a tailwind for us because if you've paid for your vacation in 2016 and and your your neighbor who doesn't own a timeshare is vacation at 2023 prices you're seeing tons of value and most of our consumers are about uh in that high 40s early 50s range but we're starting to see about uh, 15% be um, um, millennials and, uh, mill- sorry, 15% millennials, and we're starting to see our first Gen Z purchasers in the past two years. I wonder about uh, a, a new um, segment you have, which is a Sports Illustrated uh, Vacations. Yes. It sounds totally cool, right? And I think, for example, I could go to University of Alabama, um, and I hope I don't get a lot of haters writing in, uh, Roll Tide. But w- right. <laughs> what, what does that segment look like, and, and how, how is the growth trajectory? Well, I can I can pretty much assure you you'll get some Auburn uh, fan base uh, comment, <laughs> or the War Eagles. That's right. But uh, I, I think hospitality is in for a different macro trend. People are looking for experiences that relate to their personal life, and we already have the Margaritaville brand. And when I say the word Margaritaville, um, you think you know sand with a margarita in your hand. And when you talk college athletics and Sports Illustrated, you think of a certain clientele that wants to have a certain experience when they go to the University of Alabama or another one of our resorts that we'll be uh, bringing forward in the college uh, town scenario. People are passionate. College sports is a passion uh, location, and, and I think it's fair to say if you want to associate your sports experience with your alumni experience, there's not many hospitality offerings out there. So we're excited to bring the most iconic name in sports to hospitality and to tie it into the passion of college sports. Well, my college didn't even have a football team, but that's a whole different conversation. Uh, Before we let you go, I do want to ask about some recent acquisitions you made. The Accor Vacation Club, for example. When you take a look at your portfolio and future growth, are you considering more acquisitions of that type? Well, what we believe the future of the industry is to grow uh, the, the range of your consumer. We have a very close relationship with Wyndham Hotels, and has that that relationship has led us to over two billion of of via vacation ownership sales uh, that we're projecting this year. We think that same business model is replicable at Margaritaville, at Sports Illustrated, at Accor, and what could be future other brands. We want to keep our eye on the ball, so we'll be very discerning in any other acquisitions or partnerships we make. But we absolutely believe the vacation ownership platform will be expanded by the addition of incremental brands that are iconic, as well as incremental databases that uh, is supportive of our business model, which is a direct marketing business model. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Really fascinating stuff. Mike Brown there is the CEO of Travel and Leisure.